Street, maybe it's been fifth or sixth edition. I've having him here talk to you guys, and his talk will bounce all over the place, but it's generally about motivation. It's a great one. An interesting story about Coach Cuff is just how the two of I are here together. He was the coach of a rival high school right down the block of mine, so it's kind of unique in that you know, him and I are friends. I think it says a lot to who he is as a person that he reached out, tried to help me as a runner. Towards the end of my high school career, when I graduated, would meet up with me for runs, even though he had nothing to gain personally from it, other than just his own, you know, passion for sharing his love for the sport, his knowledge base to help catapult my running career. That that is a really, really special person to have as a coach, as someone that they're not in this just for their own ego to see how many you know, athletes, they can get to a certain level. They're in this just to empower each athlete that they have the fortune to work with. And so that, that's always been my most special memory of Coach Cuff. He, he's had, he has tremendous accolades in terms of how many All-Americans he's coached. He's had countless people go on to run in college. Uh, but to me, I, I think that's the most unique. Personally, I don't run into a lot. I don't, not real, I don't say a lot, you know, a lot of hot, I, interact and talk with a lot of our rival school athletes down the block at UNC Chapel Hill. I guess we're a little bit more competitive here at this level, uh, but Coach Cuff is that special person that he really will reach out to everyone. I think a lot of you guys that have been fortunate to spend time with him here at camp can really see that, that he has a great passion and a love for working with young people. So please give him 45, 60 minutes of your best attention, see how much you can get out of his talk, and certainly try to spend some time before we leave tomorrow afternoon uh, to get to know him a little bit. And uh, one, I guess the second fact I want to point out is I learned on that camp, we had a couple campers last year that he got to know quite, a, quite well that actually flew up to Staten Island, New York, his hometown, to spend some time with him and his team. Uh, I thought that was another pretty special sign of uh, the type of culture he's created, his program, and who he is as a person that people this camp, when they leave here, stay in touch with him, and we're excited to actually spend some time with his team during winter break. So that was a, that was a pretty meaningful thing for me as well to hear from uh, this year's camper. So please enjoy, and then uh, at the end of camp, I have a couple parting words before we head out to, to lunch. Okay, Coach Cuff. Greetings and salutations to all. I hope you're all well. Uh, I'm in a very difficult spot right now because I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch. <laughs> yes. So Coach Jermaine said an hour. I was planning more like two hours. No, no, no. no. Okay. Um, bear with me. What's on the board right now is really for my benefit. I'm going to email Coach Jermaine, KJ, um, uh, the entire outline, but my mind is going like it's, it's like Haley's Comet, okay? So, uh, fact, this stat right here, these are just numbers, but about an hour from now, you will have totally forgotten 10% of everything I said, okay? A day from now, tomorrow, you will have forgotten 25%. You probably retain about 75, okay? So I'm challenged here to really do a good job, okay? A month, pardon me, a week from now, you will totally have forgotten 50% of everything I'm going to say. A month from now, you will have totally forgotten 95% of everything I'm about to say. Okay. And a year from now, you'll retain about 1%. As a matter of fact, I asked some people that were here in the past, what did you remember from my speech? And it might have been about the alphabet and Alpha Bravo Charlie, which I'm going to do again today, or a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I have to throw a challenge out to you right now. Okay? Because right now you're thinking about the boyfriend, the girlfriend, texting. Okay, we're a very distracted society. We're a very distracted society. So I have to be good right now because you're also tired. So I got to be extra good. I want to be good. I want to make this meaningful and significant for you. Because what the sociologists tell us is that this generation, that you are not going to succeed as much as your parents did. Every generation in the United States history has gotten better and better 
and better and better. But what they're saying is this this generation, I don't even know if I was, you know, we had Gen X, I don't know what this generation is called right now by the sociologists, but they're saying that you will not achieve as greatly as your parents. Well, I have to step take a step away from the blackboard and say no. My job as an educator, yes I'm a coach, but I'm an educator first. You've got to educate the whole the whole being. And ladies, well it's fresh in my mind. If I say guys, is that Monsignor Farrell we have, it's an all-boys school. It's the universal sense of the word, okay? We, we, we mean all of mankind, all right? The name of the speech is actually, Coach Jermaine said, what, what's it called? Well, I call it Top of the Mountain. Our goal should be to get to the top of the mountain. But guess what? You're going to have some prop falls. You're going to slide back. You're going to gain some ground, okay? So your journey athletically is like going to the top of the mountain. Anybody can be happy and cheerful and, wow, you ran a PR, you're the greatest ever. Oh my God, you're tremendous. But what are you like? What's the test of your character when you don't perform well? What are you like? Can, can your teammates, can your coach, can your family live with you if you have a bad race? Yes. They can, probably can, but maybe I've, I've seen some things where I've seen medals thrown. I've seen guys not cool down with the team. I've seen guys go off on their own. I've, ha I've seen people do temper tantrums. Now, obviously, you can still live with your family, okay? But can you live with yourself? So the goal here is to try to teach the entire person, all right? So it's called Top of the Mountain. And a good friend of mine, happy to be Coach Jermaine, gave me a book. It's called Good to Great. Everybody in this room can be good, but what are you willing to do to become great? True, a lot of people, they fool themselves. People in general, adults, they fool themselves. College students, they fool themselves. High school students, they fool themselves. Don't fool yourself. When you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, that person you're looking at that's the person you have to be accountable to. Professor Dale, Dr. Dale was here yesterday and he told you that. You have no control over your competitors. I tell my guys from Monsignor Farrell that all the time. You can't control what Chaminade's doing or St. Anthony's or Fordham Prep, but you can control your own personal destiny academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually, I'll say that again. You can control your own personal destiny. Most people don't see that. Academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually. You are the star of your own movie. What type of movie do you want to have? You want one that's going to be nominated for the Academy Award? Or you just want to be humdrum, common, mediocre, just just in that, in the muck and mire, if you will. Now, you guys are all blessed. You're also very special because you're in something called the Olympian model. If I heard that, I'd be like, the Olympian model? <laughs> Only 5% of people in the world really make the attempt to attain greatness. So you guys, at a very young age, you've taken that step. You've taken a leap of faith moving forward. There's a lot of, of your teammates, classmates, friends, they're just hanging out at the beach and not doing any work. You made a conscious decision, many of you, to get on a plane and travel halfway around the country. Why? Duke running camp. A great thing. Phenomenal thing. Okay, so I gotta figure out how this works here. The champagne of nature. Now, at one senior battle, <laughs> Oh, I got to tell, tell you about one of the greatest races I've ever seen. You want to hear a story? Yeah. You really want to see, hear a story? Yes. yes. Who wants to hear a story? Yes. yes. We do. I'll hear it louder. We want to hear a story. <laughs> it's back in the 1990s. It's at the world's most famous arena. And there's something called the Milrose Games. It's a very, very special meet. It's hard to get into whether you run a relay, actually.